I think one of the wirings you have to have to be an entrepreneur and to be a successful investor in real estate is courage. I could use a cruder term, just a willingness to risk things and put them on the line. Best ever listeners, before we get into today's episode, I want to mention Trevor McGregor. Trevor is a real estate results coach. I've been paying him and working with him for years now. He actually is responsible for giving me the idea to do a podcast. So it's not only about transactions that he gives advice on, how to find more deals, how to make more money, but also how to build a holistic plan around your real estate entrepreneurship endeavors. That's what I love about working with Trevor, that and being held accountable for what I say I'm going to do and actually making sure that I follow through and do it. I feel like I'm a pretty results-oriented, accountable kind of person, but it's always nice to have someone who's there guiding you along the way and giving you strategy as well as psychology tips for how to deal with you know the things that come up as a real estate entrepreneur. Trevor has made a wonderful offer for the best ever listeners, and that is that he's offering a free coaching session. Go to coachwithtrevor.com. That's C-O-A-C-H-W-I-T-H-T-R-E-V-O-R.com. Highly recommend them. I've worked with them before. I'm currently working with them right now as my business, as my real estate investing coach. Highly recommend you do the same. Take him up on his offer. Get a free coaching session. Coachwithtrevor.com. Best ever listeners, hello, hello, how you doing? Welcome to the best real estate investing advice ever show. My name's Joe Fairless, and with us today, we have a guest who's gonna talk about a mortgage optimization strategy, and we've had a lot of comments on this strategy from a previous best ever guest who talked about it, and so wanted to talk about it in more detail just to make sure I understand it, because I wasn't sure if I understood it totally the first go around. And now, hopefully, I'll completely understand it. With us today, we got Bill Westrom. How you doing, Bill? Hello, Joe. How are you? Hey, doing well. And a little bit about Bill, and then we'll get into it. For the past 13 years, he's been teaching homeowners a financial strategy called equity optimization, and that's what we're going to be talking about. He's a co-author of Master Your Debt, and he's based in Portland, Oregon, but his company is based in Tampa, Florida. You can check out his website and his company at truthinequity.com. With that being said, Bill, you want to get the best ever listeners a little bit more about your background and what you're focused on? Sure. Financial background. Uh, I've been in the mortgage financing and banking business for 20 plus years, and half of those years at least, close to it, I was your standard mortgage broker and or working with uh, people right in the banking out of a branch. So I was just normal mortgage broker. And uh, I went solo and had my own operation for a little while. And a, a guy walked into my office, a representative of an uh, Australian bank, and he described this unique first mortgage line of credit, HELOC, that you could actually operate like a checking account. You could direct deposit your income into it. You could auto bill pay your bills out of it, just like a checking account, with the premise being that when you deposited your income into that line of credit, it dropped the balance and reduced interest charges immediately because we all know that interest is charged based on the balance. And if you can have a lower balance, you're saving a lot of interest. And then you pay your bills out of the line of credit and the whatever was left over between ingoing and outgoing, that would be considered your net payment against the debt. The bigger that number was, the faster you would pay off the line of credit. And when he described this to me with my background in banking, I made the connection immediately that this is exactly what the banks do with our money every day. Leverage, just leveraging our income. The uniqueness about this deal is it was all geared towards the debt side of the ledger. Like I said, I got it immediately and I've dedicated my life to teaching people how to do it ever since. Through the process, I got recruited and hired on by this lender. They were called Macquarie Mortgages USA, started by Macquarie Bank out of Australia. And I got hired on with them and their model. I wasn't going to sustain my livelihood with their model of relying on mortgage brokers to sell my product for me. So I grabbed a broker that did get it and we decided to take this to the public. And here we are nine and a half years later. It was episode 499 where Jordan Goodman talked about this and somebody emailed me afterwards and he, he asked me this question. So if it's okay, I'd like to ask you the question and then see what your thoughts are. Does that work? You bet. 
Because I know you're a numbers guy. you got a much bigger brain than I have. And I think the answer to this question will help me understand it and perhaps some best ever listeners. So here we go. Obviously, I'm going to leave this person's name out because I haven't asked their permission. But I'll just read the email. First off, love your podcast. Just listen to JF499 with your guest, Jordan Goodman. Is it me or is the strategy he's peddling kind of sketchy? Here's what I got from it. Yes, in theory, paying down the mortgage so you can pay more of the principal and not all the interest like you do in the first part of the mortgage is a great idea. But you still have the HELOC to pay off and they charge interest for that line of credit. Plus, you have the mortgage payment. So now you're paying a mortgage payment and the HELOC payment every month. So how can he say that you don't need more income to implement the strategy? Confusing because now you have two bills instead of one. Okay, very common. A lot of people that hear about this. And uh, peddling a sketchy product is probably (laughs) one of them. I know. I I didn't want to offend you, but you said I could read it as though I I received it, right? (laughs) You got it. Hey, hey, no offense taken, pal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, okay. (laughs) I've been accused of being Bernie Madoff's cousin more than once. Yeah, all right. Let's let's hear it. Okay. Uh, To understand this, right, I could get right into the details But what I've experienced over the last 13 years of talking to thousands and thousands of people is that for this to sink in, we need to change our perspective a little bit, right? And the perspective that we all have is the conventional model of banking and borrowing. And the question that that your listener had, as it pertains to that conventional model, they should be concerned with something like that, right? Because it goes against the grain and, and yes, that could be disastrous. But we need to change our perspective. We need to dig down and look at the layers of how the conventional process works because it's a very simple process. But we've got a model as consumers that we operate under and the banks have a model that they operate under. And the bank's model is the most profitable financial model on the planet because they're continually leveraging our income into interest-bearing activities. That's all that they do, right? Whether it be loans, or trading in the market. And we can do the same thing for ourselves, right? And we do it through that line of credit because it gives us the freedom to get 100% of our income working against debt 24 seven without losing the control of the money, all right? Now, when it comes to your listener's question, if you do a two loan scenario like that, which is one way to do it, we've got a conventional first and then we've got this HELOC. Well. Yes, there's going to be an extra principal payment. So, yeah, you can consider that an extra expense for the month. But if you do it right, you can control what that expense is going to be. And if you really do it right, that expense will be paid for for you so you don't even feel it. Now, this comes into some of the complexities and idiosyncrasies of running this program. Because when you look at the program, there's how does it work? How is money applied and how do we achieve this goal? But then the most important coin in the whole equation is how do you do it all right and that's where our expertise and our uh, the model that we operate truth and equity under that's where all those questions are answered and that's where we can identify should you or should you not be doing this but when you've got that second loan that's got an interest cost well the loan on that HELOC is part of your overall mortgage debt so If you take money out of that HELOC and throw it at your first, and let's say it's a $24,000 payment from the HELOC to the first mortgage. Well, when you do that, you drop that first mortgage by $24,000. That's going to make a huge impact on the interest that you pay with each subsequent first mortgage payment because it's going to drop immensely. So it's like a seesaw. Exactly. So you haven't gone in to get out of debt. You've just moved $24,000 of your mortgage debt into a different bucket. And that's Mm -hmm. a HELOC bucket that we can operate out of. Now, oftentimes, the interest that you pay on the HELOC is less than the interest that you're saving on the first mortgage. So even though you don't see it in your checkbook register in your account, you're saving interest on paper on that first mortgage. And that interest savings now becomes principal reduction in that first mortgage payment that you make every month. Now we've got the, the 24000 in the HELOC, and we, as we run the program through the HELOC, your interest cost on that HELOC falls monthly because the balance is falling monthly. So the interest you pay on the HELOC falls, the interest that you save on the first mortgage rises, 
So now you've got this offsetting effect to where you're much more efficient in the model to where the most expensive debt that you have is actually saving more interest than you would under conventional terms. And you're paying ultimately less interest on the HELOC as you pay it down. Does this all make sense? It does. All right. And so what this whole thing boils down to is efficiencies. How efficient are we in the current model? It's not very efficient. I mean, yeah, you can throw $500 more at your current mortgage and pay it back faster than terms dictate because you're following the universal law of debt acceleration, and that's throw more money at it. That's what Dave Ramsey, that's his whole strategy. You're just throwing more money at it. Susie Orman, Robert, you name it. There's only one way to do it, but you have to look at the model by which you operate with. You look at $500 extra a month at your mortgage. Well, yeah, you're, you're accelerating things down, but that's only 500 bucks a month on that big balance. And that balance is the villain. That's what costs you all the interest, not the interest rate, because the interest rate needs to feed off of something to create a cost. And it's always that huge balance on that first mortgage. So 500, it's not that big of a deal. 24,000, now you're really putting some weight on that thing and making the, the whole model much more efficient. When you take out the HELOC and you pay your mortgage off from the HELOC, then you're trading one for the other, but the HELOC, if it has a lower interest rate, that allows you to save based on whatever the difference is, and that's the, the savings that you get? That's part of the savings. I mean, the savings, there's many ways to, for the savings to occur. For one, on that first mortgage, you're saving interest because on the first mortgage specifically, because you've dropped that balance down so low, okay? On the HELOC side, depending on the interest rate, I mean, I'm not a big rate guy. Right? I've got people operating this program on unsecured lines of credit at 11 and three quarters percent. Anybody would think you just fell off the turnip truck and bumped your head if you took that kind of interest rate. But even with that kind of interest rate, and they've got about four on their first mortgage, I'm still cutting 15 years off the life of that loan, even at 12.74% because of the efficient use of the income against the balance on that unsecured line of credit. That's another piece of the puzzle that most people don't take into account is their income. It's the most powerful resource we have at our disposal. Bottom line, under the conventional model, it sits in a checking account and does what? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. Yeah. What is the bank doing with it? They're leveraging it into interest-bearing activities. Well, if it's good enough for them, why don't we leverage 100% of our income against the debt? Got it. Yeah. So it really, as you said, the, the big villain is um, that, that large chunk that you owe where the interest rate's occurring. So you pay down that large chunk. But on the HELOC, wouldn't you pay the interest rate on the large chunk that you just made the payment from? Yes. Where is the savings there if you're taking one big chunk to an, and just transferring it to look, another area? Look at it this way. If, if you took that chunk and threw it at the first mortgage and you, you drop the interest cost on your monthly payment by 50 bucks, all right, and then the interest you pay on the HELOC is 25, you're ahead of the game, right? Got it, yep. Okay, so now you're saving it 25 bucks. Well, the next month, you make your first payment, and that drops another couple of bucks, all right? So now you're at 52, and the interest on the line drops to... 23. Now you're up an additional five bucks in interest savings. It's going to happen month in and month out, right? Until that big chunk is paid off, right? And then at that point, you do it again and it's a wash, rinse, and repeat process. This is my challenge, Joe, and it's been this way since day <laughs> one, right? Because I understand the question you have and the skepticism that your listeners have. But it's all, well, but, it's well, all but from to, the, to be to be clear, it, it was lens because we don't know anything different than the conventional process, right? We we don't even question it anymore because hey, that's what we do. Money goes into a checking account, low rates, low payments, and I'm I'm mastering the con, uh, my finances through the conventional process, right? And you know, millions and millions of Americans have mastered the conventional process, but it's only going to get them so far. What my challenge is with everybody I talk to, you need to look at it at a much deeper level because it's not just about rates and payments. It's about the efficiency of the model. 
you know, and that's what you have to look at and say, yeah, that it works. Sure. And if I follow all the conventional rules and the advice of the conventional gurus out there, you're going to reach a goal. You're going to succeed faster than you would under normal circumstances. But you're still operating within the conventional model, and that will only produce so much. So you need to look at that conventional model and be able to look at the numbers, and, and, and you got to bring your income in. I mean, it's you think of the money that sits around in checking accounts, as far as the consumer is concerned, that gets them nothing, no return. And they don't even think about it because my money's there and I go get to pay my bills and I'm okay, right? They don't think about the power of the money. But on the asset side of the coin, how in tuned are people to their 401ks? Right. Right. Yep. You know, and people don't like variable rate loans. That's why HELOCs are such an evil animal. It's a variable rate loan. It's going to go crazy. Right. But on the asset side, who's got a fixed rate 401k? <laughs> Everybody on that side. No. Oh, yeah. It's a variable rate investment. OK. I'm good with that. Well, are you good with watching it fall, 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 because you have no control of that market and, you know, you just lost 50% value? Well, yeah, it hurts everybody and they're, they're bummed out about it, but they don't move out of it. They'll stay there. Now I got to wait for it to go back up. So people love variable rate loans or don't mind them or variable rate environment on the asset side, but they're scared to death of it on debt side because they don't do anything about it. They don't know they can do anything about it. Right. Because, again, a low a rate is just a rate. It can't do anything by itself. Balance is the key. Balance is the villain. Right. Because if you're not paying that thing back quick enough or fast enough to outpace the interest rate, well, then you're going to be moving in the opposite direction. But through the process, we go through analysis and consultation with people. I build in a raising rate environment. It's a protective mechanism that I build in my analysis. Because I can look in the future and I can make that rate as aggressive as I want to. A quarter percent jump every three months, a half point every six months, a point every year. I can play any rate game that I want. And through that analysis, if somebody's personal finances cannot outpace that rate, then this thing starts moving in the opposite direction. I tell them I can't help them. But I can, Makes sense. But I can look at somebody and say, look even with that rate going to 12% over the next five years, you're still paid off in 10 years because it's the application of income 24 right. seven working against that balance. It's the income never stops working against the debt. That's why this is so, so powerful. Yeah. And just, and I was going to say, just to be clear, it was just one email that I received. It wasn't, it wasn't my whole listers. No, okay. It could, it could, ju it could just be me being, being dense and, uh, you know, the lister, you know, having some questions, which understandably, cause it, it can be a concept that's a little hard to understand at first. We got to keep on going. What's your best real estate investing advice ever? Uh, best investing advice ever is look at the model by which you're operating, whether it be your investing model in real estate, that model. I mean, there's multitudes of models there. Look at your financial model of how you're banking and borrowing with your investing business. Ready for the best ever lightning round? You bet. All right. First, a quick word from our best ever partners. Are you looking for a turnkey property? If so, then I recommend you check out turnkeyreviews.com. It's Bree Smith's company. You'll recognize her name as a loyal best ever listener because she's a guest on episode 48 and they review all of the turnkey companies so you can search you can compare and also give reviews of turnkey companies across the united states go check it out turnkey-reviews.com best ever book you've read blue ocean strategy best ever personal growth experience what'd you learn from it uh, coaching youth sports i learned that you got to always be a kid at heart I like that. Best ever deal you've done? Uh, to be honest with you, every person I've ever helped through Truth and Equity reach their financial goals. How many people is that, roughly? Uh, I haven't looked lately, but we're, uh, we're close to 4,000. Best ever way you like to give back? Donate to my time to kids. Coaching youth sports. There's nothing more fulfilling than changing the heart and mind of a young mind and soul. What's the biggest mistake you've made so far in real estate or business? In real estate, buying a rental property I shouldn't have bought. 
or <laughs> or having a tenant that I shouldn't have accepted. Were those two separate stories, or is that one same thing? Uh, this one particular case was the same thing. It was an absolute disaster. Well, only from What's... inexperience. It was my first go round, and it was just, yeah, it was just. <laughs> I could I could tell you stories and have you rolling with laughter for my. Well, Netflix. we're we're gonna. Yeah, it was a one time deal. Tell us a quick story on it. Well, this was probably about 15 years ago. You know, I got tempted with becoming a real estate mogul and thought I had it all figured out. Found a house, made an offer, and he was just one of those too good to be true. But I thought, oh my God, here's my ticket. And uh, got into it and ended up having to put about 15 grand into it. And then, of course, I'm desperate to get somebody in to start paying the bill. Didn't do my research let them in the house. Next thing you know, there's 10 cars parked in the front yard. Eight of them don't run. There's seven dogs in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, it was I mean, it was just a disaster. And it took me months to get them out. I lost so much money. It was crazy. What's the best ever place the best ever listeners can reach you? Uh, they can reach me via email at bill at truthinequity.com. Or I've got an open cell phone policy. They can reach me at 352 2321751 What an enlightening conversation that uh, cleared things up for me and I appreciate it really is as you said an unconventional way to look at a conventional model with uh, your mortgage payment and while it's not directly tied to real estate in fe- well you know it is I mean I think a, a lot of it's going to be on your primary um, because home equity line of credits are kind of tough to get on your your investment properties, although it, I've heard it's possible depending on the lender. Really enjoyed in learning more about this approach. And best ever listeners, feel free to check out uh, Truth and Equity, which is Bill's company, and uh, then uh, you'll you'll be able to read more and, and learn more. And, and thanks so much for allowing us to have a follow up conversation about this and. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks for being on the show and hope you have the best ever day. Joe, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to your listeners. I appreciate it. Did you achieve all your real estate goals in 2015? Well, if you did, congratulations. Fist bump to you. If you didn't, then go to coachwithtrevor.com. Trevor McGregor is my business coach, my real estate coach. He's also been a guest on the show, episode 320. He is offering a free coaching session for the best ever listeners. Just go to coachwithtrevor.com and it'll help you to achieve your real estate goals in 2016.